Hey, it's David Ruddock, founder and managing director of Insane Technologies. I wanted to talk to you very quickly about what this whole log 4J thing is, um, at why it is uh, melting down the internet at this point in time, how it works, at why you should care and what you can do. Uh, so really, really quickly, log 4J, that's L-O-G, numeral 4, J, is a piece of software uh, leveraged by programmers to help them when they are logging data um, in their application. Uh, and logging data basically means like keeping a diary of the activities or actions performed in the application. That can be for security reasons, like uh, looking at the various authentications that have happened so that maybe you can log uh, malicious activity. It can also be for uh, you know keeping a record of, of things that have happened in the application uh, for debugging purposes or just, just to generally know what the application has been doing. It's pretty common and it's really used in lots and lots of applications, particularly applications that are written in the Java programming, programming language, which is a lot. And, and just briefly listing off a, a, a number of the applications um, that use this, Twitter, Steam, uh, Tesla, a, a lot of what's called Apache applications. Apache is a foundation. They write a lot of software, uh, Strut, Solar, and Druid. Um, Redis, which is a, a database caching application. Elasticsearch, which is a big uh, log data collection platform and analytics platform, which is used in many, many things. Uh, and, and Minecraft. In, in fact, the, the story goes that essentially this has been used by Minecraft players to sort of like uh, at attack uh, other people on, on the server. And it's weird that all these things sort of start with video gamers. Uh, but, uh, you know, essentially the way it works is what has been written into the Log4j library is that if it sees something that points to a web address, it will try and download the content of that web address and execute it. And there are valid reasons for this. Uh, you, your website, uh, your business website, probably reaches out to other web addresses to pull in things like fonts or maybe style sheets, you know, the way that the, the, the thing looks. Uh, so this is pretty common, although for it to be within the logging mechanism of, of an application and be able to be accessed and called upon so easily is a little bit weird. This this should have been disabled by default, and you should have had to explicitly turn it on. Uh, what's been done in in Log4j is that it's on by default, and you have to explicitly turn it off. So the way in which it's exploited is that anyone who uh, either attempts to connect to a web server running uh, Log4j in the background can either send in the request uh, a web address to uh, go collect some malicious code from, or even, you know, you go to www.insane.net.au and in the uh, contact us form, maybe you type in the malicious URL there. The website then pushes that little bit of code into the Log4j mechanism. Log4j then looks up that web address downloads and then executes that malicious code. Now, this has already been weaponized. Uh, we have seen actively over the weekend uh, a number of IP addresses uh, attempting to exploit uh, numerous websites that we run, that our clients run. Thus far, nothing has uh, shown up. We have seen some crypto miners try to be run. That's something that tries to generate crypto coin or cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, automatically. Uh, we're also seeing uh, malicious payloads already for malware to happen. So the, the worst case scenario that could happen from this is that your system is compromisable. They insert code into a form or into a web request to one of the things that your business runs that is accessible from the web. And it downloads and executes, say, a remote access Trojan. Think Team Viewer, but for bad guys. Uh, that would then allow them to take control of the system that they've compromised. And from there, they could either move laterally through your business, uh, ransomware your business, steal your data, do all sorts of horrible, horrible things. 
the fix for this is that a lot of software vendors are releasing patches to fix it. Uh, it, it it's also possible just to go in and change the settings to explicitly deny the feature. Uh, so there is a lot you can do if you are currently uncertain whether or not um, your system may uh, may be susceptible to this. I, I can tell you that Ubiquity Unify controllers need to be patched straight away. Uh, Forty Seam, Forty Net, Forty Seam is apparently uh, vulnerable. A bunch of TP Link related controller software is vulnerable. There's there's a lot of things that are vulnerable. Um, VMware vSphere ESXi, which is a hypervisor virtualization platform is vulnerable. Like there's a reason why the internet is melting down over this. It's a pretty serious vulnerability. Uh, if you have any concerns, reach out. Our incident response team has a playbook for this already built out. We've been checking all of our clients all weekend. Uh, as I said, so far, nothing, nothing has shown up, um, which is really, really good news. Uh, but, you know, we're here for you. If you've got any questions about this particular um, exploit or any other vulnerabilities or security questions, I uh, would love to hear from you. Uh, anyway, stay safe. See you later.